right, this is a neat little project I did. Um, at least I think it's neat. I got this message this, uh, from a guy in Mexico. Hi, this is Jose. I've been reading about preamp studies. I like to build a guitar bass preamp. I think he means bass guitar preamp. Uh, which one from your preamp do you recommend? He was looking at this bare bones two transistor guitar preamp. That's not very good. I mean, really, for a bass preamp, I think the mid cut is just too high, and the input impedance isn't great. It's it's just a neat little project, but I I don't think it would work well, and it has distortion in it too, which I wouldn't use for bass. So at least it got me thinking. Uh, so I haven't built a bass guitar preamp before. I thought, well, um, you know, why not build one? I mean, it's it's just kind of a standard little project. So, let's see here. Now the bass guitar preamp that I have is an old, um, what is it? It's a BBE383 preamp. It's an old rack mount thing, but you know, I used it to record before. It was a, it was a good uh, preamp, and I'll just show you the front of it. So where is that? Yeah, here we go. So this just gives you an idea of, uh, you know, I, I just want to look and see, well, what are the bands like? And, you know, what's the guitar or bass guitar preamp like? I just certainly want to look at these, these bands here. Well, oh, excuse me. So here's, here's kind of the EQ section. Uh, see, the top is at 3300. Got, you know, all these bands kind of kind of in here between 600 and below. You can see there's sort of a lot of different controls at lower. So this is probably, you know, typical. It just happens to be the one I I have. Uh, I've used a lot of different amps, but that's, that's what I just kind of get used to. So um, let's see here. So, you know, I, I always try and build simple things uh, you know at least for me i think they're simple like a couple transistors something like that and i think with the bass guitar i mean i almost always build something with a mid-range cut bass and treble just to me is, is not enough control to get a reasonably good sound and there was a video i did just yesterday about an inductor style uh tone stack and i actually posted that because it's kind of related to here and, and this this sort of picks up from here but in that discussion I was kind of um, talking about different ways to get um, or to sort of make passive preamps and so forth and this was sort of a base mid treble concept that I sort of combined all this into something like this and, uh, and then again that's a different video but so, you know, this is basically, um, just let me back up here for a second. The reason I'm using this type and not uh, just an ordinary tone stack is, number one, the tone stack, there's a mid-cut in it. When you turn the mid-range up all the way, there is still a mid-cut in it. And to me, for the bass guitar, I think sometimes people even use straight signals. I, I mean, I know I have before, and I've heard good recordings that way. I don't think I'd want a dip in the mid-range all the time. I mean, you might want that, you might not. Certainly in guitar, I think that's more acceptable, but I kind of like to be able to EQ the mid-range all the way up. The second reason I kind of picked this is because... Um, if you look at the inductor here that basically controls the mid-range, I'm going to simulate that inductor, and then I'm going to vary the inductance of it, and that will make a parametric EQ. Basically, I keep reading everywhere that parametric EQs are much better, and it makes sense for bass because, you know, you saw those bands that are sort of... Um, um, low there and you want to be able to kind of move and maneuver this mid-range around a little bit so you know I just kind of this is kind of where I'm starting with it and let's see here 
So here's here's an example. This is an R. I'm talking about the mid-range control that's going to be on the base. Now this is an R L C circuit, and uh, let's look at that. Okay, so there's a big dip there, right? This is your mid-range control. You can phase it out by just putting a big resistor around here, something logarithmic ideally, but you can use linear in a pinch. I do a lot. So what is this over here? Uh, this is what they call a gyrator. Uh, so this, this whole thing here. Now here's, <coughs> here's the resistor. Here's a capacitor in this whole conglomeration is a simulated inductor. They call that a gyrator and the formula for the um, inductance is you take this resistor, multiply it by this capacitor, and then multiply it by this resistor. And if you do that, you end up getting one. So this is a one Henry inductor. Um, this is sort of like a biasing setup where you have a, um, you basically bias it this way. Um, that's you know biasing the base of the transistor with this voltage divider. So, you know I'm really not an expert on gyrators, but they're always every time I've seen a transistor gyrator, they're they're sort of like this. Now hats off to Rod Elliott. He's awesome. Um, there's a great website you can look at. Um, it's copyrighted, so I'm not sure if I want to flash it in this video or anything, but I would recommend actually donating to him. If there's any one person on the internet that's done more for people, uh, DIYers and stuff, he's just awesome. So, I, you know, anyways. So this is, let's look at this actually. Now this is, um, I had to scale this whole filter differently because this this is one tenth of a Henry and this whole gyrator is one Henry so I had to you know scale this did like a filter scaling or um, anyhow let's look and compare the two uh, let's see there's this one uh, there's the simulation it's, it's very similar just a little dip here um, it's a little lower here I don't know um, so we won't, now how does this work? Well, that would just be a whole video. And honestly, I'm not really that sharp with these things, but I've seen them many times and this is what they look like. Um, you can kind of simulate different capacitance and, and uh, resistors here to, with, with uh, like different loads and so forth with the load that, that this will feed into or the preceding load and just kind of look and see how they're changed. This seems like a, just a, I use like common ordinary values. These seem to be typical values, I would say, from what I've seen. So I just went with that. Um, so let's, uh, let's kind of move on. This, this basically is the mid range control will be kind of like that. Now this here is, um, Let's take a look at this here. Oops, that's the wrong circuit. Okay, yeah, so this one here is about 700 hertz. So, let me move this over a little bit. Yeah, so this is about 700 hertz. So, okay. Let me just, now, we mentioned that this is going to be a parametric EQ. See, Right here, you can vary this resistor and it will vary the inductance. Now, let me pause this. Okay, so here is um, this is awesome website, and you can uh, look at it. And this is this is the circuit we're looking at, RLC circuit, and this is the formula for the frequency right here. So if you, the capacitor in my circuit is fixed and we're varying the simulated in inductor and that's moving the frequency. Now the notch depth and the Q and so forth are dependent on the resistor, but um, 
I don't know. I'm not really an expert on these gyrators, and they don't always behave exactly how I want them to. Sometimes I've, there's a little bit of trial and error involved. Uh, but anyways, you can increase this substantially, and that will lower the frequency. So this is starting out at 700 hertz and going down as you put a bigger resistor on there. Uh, so I'm basically going to add a 500k pot there, which can you know be varied like a uh, variable resistor can go from zero to 500. So this will vary the frequency. Um, now something to note about this: you've seen that there's a like you know a little bit of a loading effect. Um, Right here, this resistor, it actually forms a voltage divider right here. See this 100K? And this is like uh, 10K. And this, this circuit from this point on is seeing an output, I'm sorry, an input impedance of 10K. And then this is sort of has, uh, I guess you could say there's 100K uh, here is sort of a, um, resistance that's forming a voltage divider here. The signal passes all the way through here and then goes, splits off and goes to ground. Well, the AC sees the ground and it sees the second ground, but anyways, this is small compared to this. So this is really your uh, voltage divider there. So it's kind of limited. Like if you want to make the Q wider you and you increase this, for example, uh, it's going to actually reduce the whole signal a lot but anyhow it's just you know I'm just trying to tell you what maybe some of the limitations of the circuit are so there's already already going to be a little bit of loss here just because of this voltage divider that's formed there but okay so this gets a little how well, it gets I guess a lot more complex depending on what you're looking at here um, okay so uh, what did I do here? Well, if you go back and watch the other video, you see you can make a base control by basically bypassing the mid-range in this. You can make a base control here that way. And I chose to do that just like this. Okay? Now, you can also make a treble control uh, if you go around, or go around it this way. Uh, and you can see that in my other video. But instead of doing that, I'm making a second treble control uh, more similar to this setup here where you have a separate base, separate mid, and separate treble control because I just want to be able to vary the cutoff frequency on the um, low pass filter or treble control they call it. So and you can see I end up using a different um, capacitor here uh, anyways. So this, um, so this is a basic circuit. Now, so you've got your gyrator, you've got this biasing circuit, you've got a base control, uh, this plus this, and this form the mid-range, and there's the mid-range control, there's the treble control. And, okay, if, now here in the circuit, there is basically... This is just an emitter follower so that you, you have substantial input impedance. And then after all this, you go into another emitter follower and then out. This is just a load. Well, this is a, I do put it on the circuit, but there ends up being a load on that too. So this is, let me just zoom in on this. Sorry if it was, if it was out there. So, okay. I think the main thing here, you know, I did this basically by ear, oh, you know, certainly this I, I did by ear, but if I also tried different capacitors and simulated them, and I came up with this little table here, and I tried different capacitors, and then I varied this resistor, 500K, from 0 to 500, and then I you know, 500 plus 100 ends up being 600K. So here are different capacitors I tried, and here are the frequency ranges. You can calculate this, but I just simulated it. Uh, like if you use a 0 0.047, you've got 700 hertz, and when you turn up the resistor, 
the inductor goes up and the frequency goes down and it goes down to 300. So you can see there's different variations, like there's 500 to 200. But I also took note of how, how um, what the notch depth was on the mid-range like this. And you can see it's not all the same. Uh, the notch depth gets a little worse in these cases. Anyways, I'm just showing you what this table is. Uh, I ended up picking this, but you know, it might not be the best value, but uh, you can go look at that table if you want to snapshot it and change it or just experiment on your own. So, what did I do? Well, I, let's see, I built the circuit like this, and then I took, let's see, what am I doing here? Okay, yeah. So then, um, I, of course, I, I tried different capacitors for the treble, and I also tried different linear potentiometers to see which ones I thought tapered better. Um, now, logarithmically better, but I use linear stuff because I've got shells full of it. And anyways, this tended to work okay. Uh, the 50K, now you can see there's 10K versus 50k so there's like this is forming a voltage divided by their signal loss and I'm end up I'm going to go into a, an amplification stage here pretty soon so it, it doesn't quite matter as much and then I use 50k uh, here seem to do well I mean if you put a bigger linear one on it just it just tapers funny you know it goes goes from um, zero to nothing and you know just it, when you barely move the pot now if you put this up more, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of base loss here. Let's look at the, the plot on this. Uh, we've got basically 100K mid, 50K treble and base. Let's just take a look at it. Okay. Okay, now this is a little bit, I don't know if it's a little weird or not. I think it's kind of weird because I'm used to seeing other things, you know, like guitar type things. Uh, but this is what sounded best when I when I did it. So the cutoff frequency for this bass is like a lot lower than I thought it'd be for this treble, but that's what my ears told me. You can see uh, the bass going up and down here. There's a, you know, not, I haven't really incorporated the, um, uh, the parametric uh, thing, and at least it, you know, I haven't shown parametric working right here. But anyways, um, uh, there it is. You can see there's loss of almost, it's 3.37 decibels, 2.67. So we're losing some stuff here just by using the linear pots. And we're also losing the difference between the notch, the top of the notch and the bottom of the notch. Uh, let's see, let me close this thing. So let's move this down to turn that down. That's changing the frequency. Let's see if that looks any different. Okay, you can see this frequency is up a lot higher there. We've got minus 15. It's just only so you know that really the depth of the notch is suffering because I'm not pushing up uh, things the um, signal around it. But you can do that. You can put like a 250k logarithmic pot or something like that if you have it but I just I just did this I thought it sounded okay uh, works fairly well so this here worked fine now I'm using to bias these transistors since I already had this voltage divider I just put one of these resistors here from you know this is 4.5 volts because I'm using 9 volt supply and just kind of wrapped it around to here now Let's say you have 300 HFE on the transistor. You take that and you multiply that by 10,000 and the input impedance at the base then um, that this is seeing is 3 megs. So actually this is forming a voltage divider with 1 meg and 3 megs. So the signal actually, um, even though you'd think it would be 4.5 volts, it's going to be less than that because of this voltage divider that's formed between those. Another way you can bias this is just forget about this resistor totally. 
and put like a 3.3 meg or so um, resistor from this collector right to the base and that will give you even higher input impedance. I do that a lot. I just chose to do it this way just to fiddle around because I don't I don't normally do that. They say that that this type of circuit though if you're going to bias it this way is supposed to take care of the noise because I guess if you've got power supply here and then the power supply goes down this way the you know the current flows this way and then then you just bias it this way I guess it's supposed to filter out more of the um, noise uh, you're not supposed it's not supposed to pass off as much noise from the power supply to the input of the base doing it this way now if you connect it this other way I told you about then you're going yeah I guess you get more noise that way um, honestly my power supplies are pretty uh, clean so it's never mattered but but I think that you'll see a lot of pedals and things like that will use stuff like this so now this the EQ is built here but um, the, of course Jose he wanted a um, um, a preamplifier now you know I have a couple basses I, I'm not like I mean I've played bass for several bands and stuff but as far as I'm not real up to date on them, and all I can say is when I play my bass guitar and put it on an oscilloscope, I am getting a voltage of, I've got an old one that's like really rinky, and I don't know, it's it's low level, ter anyways, it's like 100 millivolts or something like that, and then I have a, a Yamaha bass with passive pickups, and it's like 200 millivolts, or 400 millivolts peak to peak, like the amplitude is 200. So, the question is, well, how much does that signal need amplified to really go into a power amplifier? Because, you know, the preamplifier is just one stage. It goes into a power amplifier. And I did a little research a while back. This was for a different project, but I did keep notes. And let me show you sort of um, what I found out. So I went to Musician's Friend, and I just randomly looked at um, different power amplifiers that you you could go into, and um, and I looked up their input sensitivity. Now the input sensitivity is um, it's let's say you turn up the power amp all the way, and you know you've got that volume knob and it's up all the way, um, and you say, well, what voltage do I need to get the amplifier going at its maximum? Um, and that's the input sensitivity. So basically, if you have a signal that is, like for this amplifier, if you have a, something that's 0.77 volts, and you run that into it and you turn it up all the way, then you should be at the maximum power, and it should be close to clipping at that point. Now, I, so, you know, some of these, I just, again, I just looked this stuff up. Some of them are, some of them don't say, like, this doesn't even say if it's RMS or... It just says 0 0.77 volts. I assume it's RMS. I don't know. Now uh, this this uh, Crown 350 watt power amp and so forth. So you can see this is kind of the range here. So if you look at uh, 1.4 volt RMS uh, to get the peak value, you multiply by 1.404 actually. So this is uh, 1.4 times 1.4. That's not right. 1.4 times 4. Yeah, 1.96. So this, basically, I want to build a preamp that is going to uh, be peak-to-peak -peak 4 volts, or the amplitude is going to be um, 2 volts. And, of course, I said my wimpy bass guitar is 200 millivolts, so... Uh, basically, that's a factor of 10. I don't have to use a calculator for that. So, um, so anyways, so moving on here. This is the last I know this is getting long, but I'm, I'm just trying to walk you through this. So, <coughs> I switched things differently here. Instead of using a um, emitter follower here, I made a, an amp. And um, 
Uh, this is a 1K potentiometer, actually like a trim pot, the whole thing is, and I put the wiper on a uh, capacitor, bypass capacitor, and I adjusted this up and down until I got a gain of 10. I chose, um, you know, I don't, you know, to go into a power ramp, I don't know what, you know, a lot of them are 22K, 33K or so. The, the ones I see, the input impedance is, you know, 10K or above. It's usually more than 10K, like 22 might be more common. But I just did this so you could use it for hopefully anything that you would run into. Yeah, this 2.2K to 10 is it's it's a little bit, it, there's a little bit of impedance mismatch there. So you lo use, lose a little bit of signal. But, um, you know, you can make it up a little bit by using more amplification. Um, so a couple changes here. First of all, um, this... You know, this is a, an amp with the 1K resistor here. So you say, well, you know, so the input impedance this is going to see here is 1,000, 1K, times the HFE, which is going to be like, you know, for my transistors, three, you know, 300K or so. So again, I use, this is, this is skirting things a little bit, you know, I mean, but again, this is, I'm trying to, keep the circuit simple and use simple things. It works fine. But anyways, so you want you don't want to bias this at 0 0.45. I'm sorry, you don't want to buy this bias this in the middle. Uh, so I changed this circuitry here. I put I put three resistors here. And this one here is going to be about two thirds of nine volts. This is going to be around one third of nine volts. So um, and then you see this subtracts off 0.7, and so you're down at like in the two, you know, round two. And then uh, this is a gain of 2.2. You know, I'm not going to get like super into this. Um, you know, you've got a gain of 2.2 and one. Let's let's look at let's just kind of see where the biases are there. I mean, I just didn't really even calculate it because I thought this would work well enough and I think it does. Um, it certainly did when I tested it, but let's let's put this here. Okay, so I changed from the Bode plot to um, just ordinary uh, wave. And let's see there, it's stepping through stuff. So let's see, we've got, this is obviously it's gonna not, nine volts. Okay, you got six volts, and you got three volts. So this should be three volts here. Now this is forming a voltage divider between here and here, 100K and 300K. So this is gonna further uh, step down to 2.38. And then right here, you've got it down to 1.7. So that leaves a lot of room for this. Now two point, so here's, and see, let's just isolate this for a second. There's the, oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. The, the, here's the emitter. And there is the collector. So it's actually this biasing scheme, I guessed right, I guess, because you got, you know, your emitters right here. Your, you know, this is not bad as far as placement of the, the input and output between 0 and 9 volts. So that's another video I might do, but basically, you know, you've got nine volts here and you want to place this kind of in the top half and this down lower somewhere. This is fine, okay? Um, so that worked. Um, now I, to, to find this, oh, I did one other thing. Um, so I use, again, I used the, the uh, uh, bypass capacitor on the, on the uh, wiper here and moved it up and down and it, it got to get a gain of 10 and when I say gain of 10 I don't mean in this whole circuit I mean from the input to the output with this load on it I had to uh, adjust it to that point now you could adjust wherever you want but you know it starts to get like there's hardly any resistance left and if you go from zero it like totally um, uh, how I say it totally clips and everything so I think a better way to do it it's very similar 
and I make this change here. So I put the 1K here, and then I add just like a trim pot, like 500K here, and then you can adjust that up and down. And that gives you a little bit, you know, less, um, you're not right at the, you're gonna be closer to in the middle of the range there. Actually, this is totally fine if you just put a 100 ohm resistor there, if you need a gain of 10. Now, my, my guitar, like I said, my bass guitar is probably pretty wimpy. It's got passive pickups. It was signed by Mr. Big and Billy Sheehan, by the way, but that didn't really help its pickup output. Uh, at any rate, uh, so you might need much less gain if you have active pickups or something. I don't really know. I don't really study the output of bass guitars, so I can't really tell. But in my mind, I think you'd build this circuit, and then you would uh, put like a trim pot here and just adjust it to whatever gain you need for your, your power amp. Now, um, you might also want to just get rid of this and put a 3.3 meg across there, because that'd give you a little bit more input impedance. So, I don't know if there's anything else to say about this. Um, let's see. Yeah, well, I can say this. I built it with these one. This was the voltage divider I used here, you know, here and here. I built both these circuits, by the way. But um, this is probably a little overkill. Like, I think you can make these 10K and save a lot of battery or whatever. I mean, if you're not using battery, say. I don't know, you know, I, I think 10K would work fine, but I haven't done it. Um, I did not test it this way, so I can't say for sure. Um, now I don't usually use this type of biasing. I, I, anyways, it's fine, but I, I, it's not something I do a whole lot of. Here's a picture of the thing that I built. I know it's kind of a messy workshop, but you, I had a... Uh, was this a base? Uh, this was mid. This was the um, right, right here was the parametric uh, sweep and then treble. Uh, it seemed to work fine. It was a little, and I can't say it was totally noisy. I don't know because I ran it in. I ran it into the power amp in on an amplifier and. When you do that, it's at 100%. So it's like taking a power amp and cranking it all the way up to 100% and then using this. So it was a little noisy because, um, you know, it was cranked up and I'm right next to it and it's on a, one of these experimenter boards. But I don't think it would be noisy if it was, you know, built differently. So I don't know if there's anything else to say about this other than... You know, it's got three transistors. It's got a parametric sweep. Um, it's got bass and treble, of course. Then it's got adjustable gain. So, and I think the, you know, when I listened to it, it sounded pretty good, I think. Um, I mean, it's not perfect. You know, the tapering, like I said, is not totally perfect. But, you know, really, you can tell that the mid control, the, the whole way the bass sounds with uh, sweeping the mid can be made to sound a lot different. Uh, you know, if you built this too, you could also put like another capacitor here with a little switch so that you could have, you know, like you could extend the band or, you know, have like high parametric and low parametric. Um, that would be kind of a neat improvement um, and it would be kind of minimal. But, you know, for... Um, for three transistors and making pair, I, I think it, it turned out okay. Definitely acceptable. I, I mean, I would use it. Um, so if you have any comments or any suggestions, let me know. This is my first bass guitar preamp. Uh, you probably could make something uh, if, if you found your favorite frequency uh, and how you like your bass to sound. You know, with this, you could probably make a. Um, just an ordinary passive tone stack um, but I think parametric mid control is pretty cool on a bass bass guitar yeah. and honestly it's cool to use a gyrator for something because I don't have the opportunity to do that very often so thank you very much for watching hopefully uh, hopefully it was worth putting this up
Have a great day. Okay, I just wanted to clarify something. Uh, this was basically my final uh, circuit. I mean, there's a 500k sweep here, 50k base, 100k mid, 50k treble. And here, this is like a 500k, I'm sorry, not 500k, 500 ohm trim pot, which is sort of trimmed down to 100, or you can just take 100. It, it just depends on how much gain you need, like I said before. But uh, for people that might not understand this, I, I want to be a little bit more clear. Um, I put this on here. This is a, to represent a 10K load, but it's not really part of the circuit. Um, so it's sort of like... Uh, don't worry about this. This is representing the load and this is the output. And then you're going to want to add an extra resistor here. I usually do like 10 times the load just to, and that just kind of keeps it it ground. It's like a pull down resistor they call it. So I usually put like a 100k um, resistor there. And then this represents the load of the amp you're going into. Um, let's see if there's anything else about this circuit you might want to do. I mean, a lot of people would put like a, uh, you really see in a lot of circuits like a little blocking resistor here, like 1K.